All right, all right, all right, everybody. I did some uh, transmission adjustment on the 904 to see if I can get second gear back. Probably not. Oh, shoot. Puddings. All right, so we're going to take it out for a little cruise right quick. again it's got a weird little clip deal on the back of this thing and one of the clips is broke so if you pull on the cable it'll pull it out so I got to take the whole cluster out of it again to plug in that cable I think I tried to glue it into place but it didn't work or taped it or something just to hold it and I don't have a shift needle down there either so <laughs> sometimes I'm not sure what uh, if I'm in drive or second who knows that guy was checking us out. He's like, hell yeah, look at the look at that damn Dodge. Hell yeah. I mean, if a cop pulls us over, we're, we're not even speeding, man. There we go, cruising, 185. So that ain't too bad. I mean, it, it'll stay like almost right there. So it's like 84 degrees today, something like that. gear and 
I still felt a big shudder. So the band adjustment, none. It's cooked. What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Half Ass Garage. There's the truck back over at Jay's up on the lift. What can I say? Trans is bad. So I think I've mentioned it before. I don't know. Whatever. So I'll show you the stuff I got going down. Well, all right. The old 904 is out of the truck. So apparently it was a junkyard trans at one point anyway. 88 Dodge truck 904. Someone paid 150 bucks for it. Looks like 826 of 2011. So a little bit older. That thing is toast. Um, but the 727 is in the truck now. So I got it all mounted up. I've got to do the lines. I didn't get a chance to film this yesterday. I had some help from my buddy, but uh, he didn't want to really be on camera. So And we were hustling, so I didn't get a chance to do much. Um, but yeah, just going to hook up the lines, linkage, some little odds and ends that I got to take off the 904. And then we'll be good to go. Put the exhaust back on it. And I think we're solid. One of the biggest problems, do 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 is this of course <clears throat> look at that okay well so that's leaking so I kind of looked at the um, the fine print of the gasket make the the sealer that I used on that and it says it dries hard so I didn't I didn't notice that I thought that it was gonna be like RTV silicone type of deal and it doesn't so it dries hard this is a plastic tank so you know it flexes and expands and whatnot and it broke the seal so anyway I'm gonna have to pull that out it's got it's a 38 gallon tank it's got like 25 gallons of fuel in it or whatever so we're gonna try to drain it out later on and whatever I don't know if you'll get to see that or not so being that, uh, you know, you if you watch the other video, you'll know that this thing was a nightmare to take out while I was, you know, laying on my back in the shop, in my shop. So up here on the hoist, it's going to be a lot, lot nicer. Um, just take off this bolt. This thing will kind of come down. These bolts here that hold this frame together, these are captured, you know, inside the frame rail, so it's hard to get to might be able to get something in there or whatnot but anyway those things are inside of there so what I did is I just bent this thing out pulled this bolt off bent this thing up same with that um, this tank was installed in the truck with the bed off so at the factory you know the bed was off of it there we go how's that so yeah bed was off because you can see up in there there's the little stud this thing goes up in it there's like no room so maybe I can get something on it I don't know we'll see kind of be a nightmare to you know get it back up but anyway all my fuel lines and stuff holding up good for the almost no miles I've got on it before it's back up in the lift but yeah doing good so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start pulling stuff apart I don't have a tripod here like usual because I'm unprepared but it's really nothing more than you have already seen before on the channel now look at how big that thing is it goes like right up to the axle in the back it's crazy all the way up here to the cross member shoot it's big so anyway it's like filled up to here with fuel so I end up bringing some gas cans with me right there I got 15 gallons right there we got to pump out a bunch of fuel because I got to pull that down I also bought me another VP can for you know water it says it's like for water not this is not a portable fuel container there you go so you can't use this for fuel so I'm not gonna use it for fuel use it for something else it smells just like fuel and burns in your truck and makes it go but you're not supposed to do that I don't know is it illegal I don't know so that's what's happening sorry I didn't get a video for from doing all this yesterday we were super hardcore jamming didn't really get a chance to but I'm gonna try to show you some stuff today again I don't have a lot of time here at Jay's shop so I've got to make the most of it and filming takes three times as long easy 
So, I don't know what I'll get done for you guys today, but I'll show you the end result for sure. Well, well, fancy meeting you here. All right, let me show you what I did. All right, let me put on the light so you can see. Right here, I did nothing at all. I tried to... Oh, Jay's home. I tried to get this off, brake line stuff. Didn't work out so well. Not too interested in busting a brake line on Jay's hoist. Got this loosened up. I can't do anything with this with the fuel uh, yet until Jay gets here, which I think he just did. Fuel, our transmission lines are all tight. Um, kind of stuck in the dipstick there. All the linkages is on. This uh, neutral safety switch is about to break off in my hands. Everything should be good here. I don't think it's gonna leak. Everything's on. So this adjusted the shifter so that it would work. It's in park. Yeah, I think I got pretty much everything done. We just have to drain the tank now. Welcome, it's another day. You can see the fuel tanks on the ground. So I got that out of there. Alrighty then, here we go. Sucks, right? Okay, so all this crap that's all running down the side, that was that fuel proof uh, sealer that uh, that I bought you can see it basically turned to chalk essentially it was garbage I thought my gasket failed but the gaskets all right um, on a positive note with the length of my um, fuel pump that I made that sticks down in there there's like a gallon or less of fuel in this whole entire tank so when when my pump starts going dry I have basically no more fuel in the truck so that's good. Luckily, I kept my pattern for making the gasket. Um, I do have, let's see if you can see, there's a bunch of crap from the, this is, I didn't drain this. So this is all the fuel that was actually in this thing um, from my fuel pump. Cause I ran it, that gas can's full. I used my little jump box uh all three of those gas cans are full over there so my vp can these sorry about the wind i can't do anything about that so all of these 21 gallons 22 gallons something like that and i used a little fuel pump oh i'm sorry i used the electric pump out of the truck so what i did was tapped in a wire oh it's gone it's out so I just tapped in a wire to my fuel pump there and then grounded it, ran it off my jump box. Took about 15 minutes, pumped out all the fuel. And that is all the fuel that's left in the tank. Pretty good, right? So it's got all that kind of junk down there from, from that uh, gasket maker crap. Anyway, whatever. I've been talking about that for too long. Here, I got some of this now. Fuel resistant gasket dressing and sealant. Uh, resists all automotive fuels. So, you know, non hardening, non setting. Now, this is where things change up. This is a pretty thin gasket that I was using. This is an actual, you know, a good gasket for oil pumps and carbs or whatever. Um, this gasket material. Uh, and this is my nice cork. So it looks like it's about an eighth inch thick cork rubber sheet. That's going to be perfect for that. And we're good. So I think, well, the cork will conform to any irregularities in here and it'll sit down nice. And then I think once I put this stuff on the front and the top and bottom of this cork gasket and it gets squished down, we're going to have no more leaks. So that's going to be good. That's kind of where I'm at. All the stuff, all Jay's soda cans falling off the top of the truck. So that's kind of where I'm at right now with things on the truck. Um, here's the dealio with working at Jay's. Um, some people kind of like, hey, why can't we see more of what's going on at Jay's? Every second that my truck is out, out here on the lift is every second that one of Jay's really nice cars has to sit outside under these trees. You know, stuff like that. We get 
a lot of wind, a lot of rain, tree limbs come down. Some of these like trees drop like these sapling little, I don't know what they are anyway, and they, they're really hard to get off the paint. So when I'm here, I don't have time to shoot video really because I'm just cranking on this because I don't want Jay's really nice cars to sit outside. And he's generous enough to let me, you know, use his lift and stuff. So I just really crank on it. So I try to show you what I can when I can. So I hope that's good enough for you, a little bit of an explanation. Now I have to clean out this fuel tank and uh, try out the gasket. So I'll show you in a minute. All right, so I got this thing cleaned up. Uh, nice and clean. As clean as I can get it anyway. There's nothing in there. Um, got all that crusty junk off of it, whatever it is. And then here is one interesting thing. So there is my fuel pump, modified, whatever you want to call it. So what I did before, I don't know why I did it actually. Um, this is the fuel return. This is, you know, obviously coming from the pump up here out to your engine. And this is the return. So I had this thing just coming down and it was just pouring fuel straight down. I don't know if that aerates the fuel or not. I mean, this is almost at the bottom of the tank down here. So I'm not entirely sure what the deal is, uh, how that would work. But uh, now that I've got it out, I figured, you know what, I'll just make the return kind of shoot out. So in the case that there's lower fuel levels in the tank, let's say it's down in here, that would probably be 10 gallons or so, 12 in the tank, I would guess. Um, if this is pouring down and recirculating a bunch of aerated gas, um, having it just shoot forward um, would, would just be helpful. So that's what I did. I didn't have another stainless steel clamp, so what I did is I just used some zip ties. These aren't great zip ties. They're like the Harbor Freight ones. I really don't know how that's going to hold up submerged in fuel, but I'm way out in the sticks here, and uh, it would be an hour, hour or so to get to a parts store to get anything else. So I'm going to leave it uh, like this for now, unless I can find something <laughs> in here somewhere that I can borrow. But other than that, I'm going to cut this shorter about right in here. Uh, bend it so it's a little bit, there we go, a little bit better. I don't want a bunch of vibrations on this thing. That's the big deal, is a bunch of, you know, vibrations causing metal fatigue, and then this would end up with premature failure. So if I can cut it back into here, it'll still force fuel forward, and I think we'll be good. So anyway, that's it. Got a little bit more cleanup work to do, but other than that, I think we're good to go. Here is my pattern. I already cut out the cut out the uh, gasket. You already saw that in the other video of how I made that. So just go ahead and cut out the gasket and uh, figure it all out. Let me look around for some stuff on this real quick. I did this instead. So it's still got the zip ties. They might fall into the tank or something like that. But uh, anyway, it could be longer, but I don't want to invoke a bunch of vibration. I think it'll be good enough. And now, there we go. So that's it. So, bad news. So this is some new fuel proof, uh, you know, stuff that I got. It's like tacky. But what happened was the nut certs pulled right out of my tank. So, yeah. I was skeptical about these because you can buy these nut certs that will engage at different lengths. And, you know, given the width of this tank in there, it's like 3 sixteenths. I'm going to need some, some of these nut certs. There we go. I'm going to need some of these nut certs that engage lower. So, that's a bummer. All of them did, and there was no pressure on it. So that sucks. That means that we're held up. Today is Saturday. And, uh... Yeah, I can't do anything. I can't get um, can't get my drive shaft until probably Wednesday. I don't even know where to get these around here. The nut certs. I can try to order them order them online. Hopefully they'll come in 
I don't know. One thing that I did get done is this bracket right here holds the tank up and it's mounted to the frame. Well, I think I showed you guys, you can't get a wrench up in, in here when the tank is on it. So I zipped the tack just on the frame on both of them just to kind of hold it so I can actually take them off here if I want to. That will allow this to pivot down some and you slide the tank up in it. Well, you know, what can you do? All right, here we go. It's another day here. I finally got the drive shaft in. I just picked it up. So there we go, CCI. Pretty awesome. Seems like every place around here uses CCI for their stuff. So this is unpainted, but it does have some clear on it. So what I'm gonna do is I bought some clear. I'm gonna just kind of clear it again. That way it looks nice and silver and stuff. And uh, you know, it won't just rust. Anyway, that's what they told me. If I wanted to do something to keep the rust down, clear it. So that's what we're gonna do. So this is what we're gonna use on the drive shaft. I don't know if it's any good or not. You can let me know. There we go. And the hose are down. Now I'm just gonna hose her down. And there we go. Ignore the runs. Here, can't even see them. Well, I guess you can see them from everywhere. I put extra all over the top there. So that's what you kind of see running down. Looks like I got it on my phone too. Man, that stuff is crazy. All right, I got uh, some nut certs. So there we go. Good old McMaster car coming in clutch. Here's one of the new ones. This grip range is a lot higher, so um, it should grip within 3 16 or less. Anyway, <clears throat> these are the plated steel ones. And then I got stainless ones. Super awesome. And I got aluminum ones. There's only one problem. These are the only ones that are right size. Bummer. So I need a 1024. And you might see these are 1032. But yeah, there's the maximum grip width. 0.225. So... Anyway, that's it. 1032. So steel is the only one that we can use right now because it's 1024. There, there's a good, there's a good grip, a good thing to show you the grip. So 1024, and it goes from 130 to 225. That's the total grip range of these. The other ones were 020, 020 to I forgot one. I don't know 130. So 020 to 130. So the other ones were quite a bit smaller. Take these over there and get her done. All right, so there are some of the, uh, there you go, maybe you can see them better right there. There are the nut certs that pulled out. You can see how far up they kind of mushroomed over on these corners. So that's the part that, that failed, is that it didn't grip deep enough into the tank. So we're gonna fix that today. All right, so this is, I don't know if I showed it already, but anyway, this is the like sealer that I used. It gets super sticky, um, and these things tighten down pretty good. So I'm hoping it'll glue itself kind of down a little bit. Uh, so that's the deal. Um, it does kind of get a little bit hard, but, you know, it's been sitting here for three days now. That's fine, so no big deal. I put the sending unit in it. Now I just have to fit it all up into here. I might wait for Jay because the length of this thing makes it really awkward. And I don't want to rip this stuff out again. There, I believe that whatever, like these nut certs, I'm at the limit. Now, if I were to break those, uh, I'm not sure I could, I could salvage the holes because they're so close to the edge. So long story short, if I blow it now, I'm screwed. So I gotta just be careful with it. Once it's up in here, we'll be good to go because um, everything will be locked down in. I gotta give that stuff time to set up anyway um, to kind of get more gooey. It's it's almost like a contact cement. So anyway, there's that. So I'll just clean up and wait. Drive shaft, can't really do anything with that right now because you know if I put it in, I won't be able to get the tank in. So anywho, yeah, not too bad. Hurry up and wait. I got a new hat, new welding hat. 
This one is orange on the inside, so I don't get shot if I'm in the woods welding. Anyway, uh, I got the tank in. Check it out. So I use this kind of like, I don't know what you call it, sling or whatever it is right there. Use that to kind of hold the back up in. Drop this thing down. Um, I think I showed you I tack welded those, these bolts on the inside of the frame so I can actually, you know, take them off from this side now with the tank in it. So I did that. Drop this thing down on more of an angle. I was able to slide it up in there. I only feel like I tore like 80% of the muscles in my shoulders, but we're good. Everything here is nice. This thing hasn't been put on yet, but uh, I have to put the filler neck on or whatever, the, the tube that goes down to it. This is the, the breather. This is the vent right here that goes up into this part here. So I'm going to put that all on. And uh, yeah, I think actually if I'm lucky, if I'm really lucky, I should be able to have this truck finished. By the time Jay gets home, let's see what time it is. 327. I'm not sure. Alrighty, drive shaft is in. Um, tight. It's in neutral right now. So we're good. Um, tank is all on. I'm working on this. Uh, somehow the bolts for it got lost. I don't know where they went, but they're not here. So I gotta find some, I'll find another bolt. I'm just going to use a temporary one. Probably don't even really need it for right now. But anyways, all good. Uh, dipstick in unknown right now. I'm going to wait for Jay. He's going to get up at the top and we're going to kind of mess around with it and see. Low car makes a kit that I might end up buying. Uh, it comes with like a little funnel, but they take forever to fill. So I might just get the low car kit. We'll just have to see how that turns out. Uh, if you watched the other video on the truck, you saw that we did a lot of bending on that and massaging to make it work. But yeah, everything else is pretty good. Got my fuel system all in place, grounded out. Everything's good. So we're doing all right. It's kind of getting a little bit dark outside, so the rain's going to be coming in. Jay should be here within like the next half hour or so. We can get up in the front. After that, I think we'll be able to fill the fluid and start it up. One eternity later. It's fun, man. There ain't nothing wrong with that. It's fun. There ain't nothing wrong with that. All right. Yeah, no, it's, it, I'll tell you, I'm 